So my name is Jamie Walters. I'm here with uh, uh, presenting our Mojave Technical Demonstrator. This is uh, demonstrating a short takeoff and landing capability. It has been uh, previously demonstrated on the Royal Navy Prince of Wales where we launched and recovered in under 100 meters on the Prince of Wales as well as in South Korea on the Docto. This is really the entrance into a new market for General Atomics with short takeoff and landing capability. And it is most recently, we signed an agreement with Hanwha for, to bring this into a production configuration. We are now able to take off extremely short and land on or operate off carriers, land and operate off dirt roads or parking lots, wherever that may be to suit the battlefield. So not only was it an increase or essentially doubling the horsepower of the engine using a turboprop engine, it is a new wing and tail configuration. These wing and tails are configured for short takeoff and landing. On a normal Gray Eagle, you're looking at a four to 5,000 foot runway. On this platform, you're looking at under 300 feet or 100 meters. What we're featuring here to my right is a new entrance uh, for an air launched effect called Pele. We're very excited about this. It can be launched from the Gray Eagle Stoll, Gray Eagle, our MQ-9 series platforms, or even some advanced platforms. It's designed to go out for about seven hours of endurance at 500 nautical miles with uh, about a 40 pound payload. That payload can be swapped out for ISR to strike, to targeting, very, very uh, flexible design. We also are featuring here is a contested logistics configuration. So to my left, there is a large pod that can deliver uh, supplies, ammunition, medical supplies, whatever that may be to support the battlefield up front and on that front line and having a configuration like the Gray Eagle Stoll. Now I can land on very short fields. I could land on a beach. I could land on a dirt road get those supplies right next to the forward lines and support the, uh, the battle. So the AMPV multi-purpose vehicle allows uh, the United States Army to do a multitude of things. One is it can provide an, op an option for a different infantry fighting vehicle or IFE. And that's what we have here be at the booth today is an AMPV general purpose hull with a 30 millimeter uh, turret on, on top of it. And in the turret has counter UAS capabilities. Also on this platform, we have Forterra's autonomous hardware set up so the vehicle could be operated autonomously. We also have band track, which reduces vibration uh, to the vehicle and also reduces weight of the vehicle. We also have a 360 SA uh, system, situation wire system on the vehicle, which gives the crew inside when they're buttoned up, 
complete situational awareness of and around the vehicle. So this is an option, but the true option of this whole thing is the very top plate of this AMPV has a universal top plate, which allows the United States Army to pick from over 30 different turrets or effectors to place on the vehicle without having to change out that armored top plate. So what you're seeing here is an IFV option that the Army could consider going forward, but the real value of this entire thing is any type of modernization the Army would want to do, they can lean on the AMPV as the base chassis, and then as threats emerge around the world, they can affect, uh, attach or append different effectors onto the vehicle to address those emerging threats. So it's a dynamic platform, which, create, which is, can be used as the foundation of modernization for the United States Army and its allies. Uh, so AUSA provides uh, VA systems and everybody here a couple of opportunities. One, to showcase to the United States Army what anybody can do for VA systems, what the AMV can do to help modernize and move at an increased increase pace for the Army. The second big thing is this collaborative environment. So this allows VA systems to work with companies like Forterra, Kappa, Rank, all these other uh, innovative and creative companies so we can work together and bring capability at a better rate to the Army. So one, showcase our skills to the Army, and two, build on the collaboration of the multiple partners we have uh, within the industry itself. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so what we've brought here today is the MUD XM. It's our next generation uh, to the ESMIT. Uh, we're demonstrating here today the capability to integrate the GDOTS 20 millimeter cannon a very powerful capability that on a Kongsberg turret can provide you air defense capabilities uh, for a smaller, lighter infantry formation. And so if you think through that, one of the challenges with short range air defense on a Pander or a Sergeant Stout is how do you get that in an Indo-PACOM environment, for instance, on an island uh, campaign. But those soldiers there need air defense protection and counter UAS protection just as much as the large formations in the open plains of Eastern Europe, for example, in battlefields. Well, what this uh, MUD XM provides, teamed with our Kongsberg and our GDOTS partners, is an opportunity to provide a very powerful, effective uh, 20 millimeter cannon capability to defeat uh, those threats on the future battlefield. U-Hawk is the newest member of our Hawk family of systems. It is a fully autonomous UAS that is capable of delivering over 10,000 pounds of payload. The aircraft obviously is based upon our U-860 family, it, so it is has a high level of commonality with the current Blackhawk and the Seahawk fleets. The capability of this aircraft uses matrix autonomy to allow a single operator to control multiple different aircraft. And it enables that operator to, to give the aircraft mission tasks that are focused on the aircraft operating fully autonomously from actual engine start to the mission and then also engine shutdown. And we enable the operator to conduct this interface through just a tablet. With that 10,000 pounds of payload, we're able to either carry internal or external loads with this aircraft. So we have the ability to deliver multiple different types of not only ammunition and supplies to uh, the battlefield, but we also have the ability to deliver UGVs, all-terrain vehicles, motorcycles, whatever the maneuver commander needs uh, to conduct the operation. Since this is a Blackhawk, it also has the external load capability. So you can combine both the internal and the external loads for this aircraft. So we're looking forward for this aircraft to be flying next year, and it'll be out doing uh, demonstrations, both with uh, cargo handling capabilities, sustainment delivery, but also we'll be using this aircraft to deliver UGVs and also launch defects. Behind me is what we are calling the Deep Fires Autonomous Launcher. Um, conceptually, 
the U.S. Army is challenging industry to help them come up with a common launcher that can participate in both a surface-to-surface -surface as well as a surface-to-air mission set using a common launcher to uh, affect those two mission sets. The additional element of this common launcher is they would also like it to be autonomous. In other words, can we maneuver it around the battlefield without actually having to put soldiers in a seat and driving them along? This is our solution. We recently took our deep fires autonomous launcher to an exercise that was supported by the U.S. Army, and we demonstrated uh, the capabilities that you and I have just discussed. Uh, it is our intention to work along with the U.S. Army and other industry partners to accelerate the advancement of this Deep Fires autonomous launcher capability. My name is Frank Lazara. I'm the Director of Sales and Strategy for Bell on the MV75. The MV75, commonly known around the world from our demonstrator phase as the V280, but it is now called the MV75, which is a tilt rotor that is purpose-built for the Army Assault Mission to basically double their capability that they have currently in their current fleet. We are on track now to deliver an aircraft next year, would be the first prototype. So we are in the phase of finishing critical design reviews, uh, releasing engineering, actually building parts, and in some areas, starting assembly of the first aircraft that will be delivered next year. Tilt rotor leverages the advantages of a wing that can't be reproduced in any other rotary wing form. The easy way to look at it is basically double the range, double the speed of a conventional rotary wing aircraft like the Blackhawk. And that's because you can rotate those prop rotors take off and land like a helicopter, maneuver like a helicopter, but when you are cruising, you cruise more like an airplane using the advantage of a wing. Well, it's designed to do the same basic mission, so carry a squad size plus some enablers or additional payload that's got a larger cabin area than a Blackhawk, so it can carry more, reconfigurable for the medevac mission, uh, various other types of missions. We're already promoting on the international level. We already have a very vigorous not only at Bell, but with the U.S. government has a very vigorous program office doing the work for it to uh, pave the way for future international sales, partnerships, collaboration. We've had the Hawkeye for some time now. Uh, we fired well over a thousand rounds. Uh, but recently we also uh, sent the Hawkeye to Ukraine where they tested it and then they put it into co uh, combat for about 10 months. And then they came back and told us that we were very impressed with the system, but also uh, suggested a few improvements that we have incorporated into the Hawkeye 2.0, as you see behind me. But the Hawkeye system as it is today, still extremely capable. Uh, as you know, it has our, our patented soft recoil technology that reduces the recoil of the system by over 70%, which allows us to put a, a very large gun on a much smaller vehicle. It's still based on the, the, the cha same chassis. There's just some uh, changes we've made to the, the structure and, and the look of the vehicle as well, correct. Uh, well, you know, I think, uh, you know, our, our largest customer is, is the U.S. Army, but this AUSA is really an international show now. Uh, so, you know, armies from around the world come here and these are our customers and we, it gives us a chance to hear from our customers, see what they think, and also show some of our new capabilities. So what you see behind me is our Extreme FMAV, and this is based on a currently production uh, vehicle for our international partner partners, the uh, Mobile Artillery Platform. It is a, normally has a 155 millimeter turret system from Elbit. It is a mixture essentially of a PLS and a LVSR from our other brands, but essentially it's a new platform to show the ability to carry heavier payloads within the missile family. So what you see on the back of this vehicle 
is uh, four Tomahawk missiles. This is a prototype project that we've launched to create the ideation of if there is a heavier option or heavier payloads desired from the indications of CAMEL, that this is a something we'd be willing to look at. We're taking all indications from the Army constantly to see where the future leads us. So we akin ourselves to following the Army, but also developing new modernization to create those identified requirements gaps and where our capabilities can best meet the soldiers' needs. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. So this is our heavy duty hybrid vehicle. It is a diesel power uh, series hybrid that leverages the same commercial high, highly capable diesel technology that we have in our infantry squad vehicle. It's the same engine. Uh, it creates energy that's stored in a battery, a 102 kilowatt hour battery that then distributes energy to motors, one on the front axle, one on the rear axle, and that offers instantaneous torque capability. So a highly capable off-road, but also has all of that stored energy that can be used for silent drive, silent watch, also to be exported for a range of different uh, mission requirements. Uh, we talked about one of the high, highly desirable needs at the Tactical Edge is energy. This thing brings a tremendous amount of that energy. This vehicle is based on the Silverado heavy duty 3500 chassis and capability, but then we introduce technologies from other vehicles. We introduce technologies from the Hummer uh, EV program, from the Lyric program, and other programs that shows our ability to reach in and draw from the tremendous depth and range of technologies and investments that GM has made and bring it to bear for a military solution. We can leverage the same, uh, the same capability that, that GM has to uh, extend its commercial market internationally we're, we're essentially able to leverage that. Uh, we bring our customers a global supply chain and reach uh, for maintenance and service uh, that I think is, is unmatched. Gotcha, so our, our company is called Mars Incorporated. Uh, we're in Montana, north central US, right next to Canada. About a year ago, my partner and myself, we had a concept. Um, there was a contest with the Army called X-Tech, uh, which means experimental technology for a precision grenade rifle. Um, something beyond what a launcher would be. It's kind of an area effect weapon. Uh, this is designed to be a direct fire weapon that delivers a grenade that carries a payload. It differs from the 40 millimeter in that it's, it's, a, it's a 30 mil, uh, you know, a smaller, lighter projectile, uh, travels about twice the velocity of the typical 40 millimeter. Um, doesn't carry quite, quite as much payload, doesn't have the same explosive capacity, uh, but because of the increased accuracy, that comes with a lot of increased lethality. This particular gun weighs 13 pounds, so a little heavier than an assault rifle, but it's lighter than the multi-fire 40 millimeter grenade launchers like uh, the MGL revolving guns. It has less recoil than the Mark 19s that aren't safe for somebody to shoot when you're talking about the high pressure 40 millimeters. This weapon allows you to hit something the size of a human being at 600 yards. We've got counter drone capability where, where, where we can track airborne objects. We are in development right now of a special counter drone round. Our ammo partner, they're called Amtech. They've done terrific development on the ammunition technology uh, as far as lethality and range and accuracy and capability. This is our first prototype. It's been fired upwards of 2,000 times. In the next few months, we're moving into a second leg of the grenade competition. Uh, there's a prototype project opportunity notice uh, that's open to various other companies um, with the intention to hand over a manufacturing contract if and when the Army decides to adopt the Precision Grenadier Rifle.